It's Canada Day. I'm cheerful. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm over caffeinated as well. Yeah. Sure. Manitoba, Canada, in the same space this what? time. Someone convinced me to get out of my house today. I don't know why. We are recording on July the 1st, which is a Canada day. <laughs> now you got a link in the show notes. <laughs> Darn heritage minutes. <laughs> moments. Love it. Heritage moments. Heritage moments, yeah. Love it. Love it. So uh, I'm down in Osborne, and we're going to check out the street festival once we're done talking about all the things that are knitting in yarn. That's because they're only forecasting for a high of 26 degrees today. That's why Jocelyn left her house. Only 26 degrees. Because if they were higher than 26 degrees, Jocelyn would have said nope. 26 degrees in Fahrenheit is Way... mid to high 70s? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mid to high 70s, yeah. Somewhere in there? Yeah. But we've got the humid dicks, so we're going to be right. pushing closer to 30 plus degrees Celsius. So 80 something degrees. Into the 80s in the Fahrenheit, yeah. <sighs> However, it's been hotter. For longer. This is a cool day. That is so depressing to say. I live in a cold climate. Where's my snow? It's only cold for six months of the year. The other rest of the year, it's too blindingly hot to bother with it's going outside. Tragic. It's just tragic. Oh well. On the bright side, Diana's gonna let everybody know what we're going to cover this week, and I will throw in the as we are an audio and a visual podcast. When she's done doing that, I'm gonna spit some words out at you that are not necessary if you watch us, but are necessary if you listen. <laughs> All right, this week we are covering What's in Our Cup, Wooly Workings, uh, Fiber Flubs, Yarn on the Go, So Little Time, Wool Gathering, Events, and a Review. Ta-da! I don't know what that face was. Uh-huh. We were super serious, right? We're gonna, we're gonna do the thumbs. I really hope that pops up as a random thumbnail. That would be great. <laughs> you notice the last couple of weeks all of our thumbnails for episodes have been my cat. Well, your cat is so photogenic. My cat is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> She's so helpful. She's not. She was helping me type yesterday, guys. It was not helpful. <laughs> I have to finger type right now because I can't bend my one wrist. So I am already have enough troubles. Good thing I have the blind lady keyboard, which is... You guys will have seen it in pictures on the Instagram. It's got the yellow keys. That's my keyboard. <laughs> With the black lettering on it, which is a lot easier to see. Which is fine. Then she tries to help by putting her paw on the keyboard, too. Very helpful. Uh-huh. Moving my mouse around. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chasing the pointer on the screen. Chasing the pointer on the screen. And then deciding it's nap time and lying across all of it, which makes my computer go, blah! Yeah, that sounds about right. <sighs> okay, fine. <laughs> so I have a question about your keyboard. Mm-hmm. Why yellow and black? Because I would think white and black would be higher contrast. But yellow doesn't glow as much as white does under different types of lighting. Oh. So the yellow presents a duller brightness okay. that you're not then competing with a glare or a shine off the keyboard okay. itself. Okay, sort of like matte versus glossy. Yeah, the okay. same reason why I wear brown sunglasses instead of the black sunglasses. The black sunglasses filter more light, yeah. but the brown tints everything different shades of beige. My life is beige, folks. And that allows me to tell the difference between concrete and brick walls and people. Right. and So it just still I blocks see, sun, see. but it does it just a little bit differently. Okay. If anybody was interested in the science of why I have weird things, there you go. All right. So because we're on YouTube, we'll do a, as Diana would say, you should shall like a scribe. In fact. Share, like, and subscribe. If you follow us in an audio format, please feel free to uh, write us a review either on Apple. Uh, I don't check Apple. Diana does. Nah, sometimes. I'm really bad with that. Me However, too. if you want to get a hold of us, the quickest way to do it is through our Gmail, which is northernknitspodcast at gmail.com. Or the uh, Instagram. You can direct message. I do reply fairly quickly. It, like right now, it's up in the air, but I do reply. <laughs> <laughs> or leave us comments and stuff, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So, I've been pretty good this week. We have a Ravelry group. Mm -hmm. I've even made it into the Ravelry group and not got distracted with patterns, which is saying something. Such focus. Such focus this week. 
So I've been commenting because we've got Ravelry threads for all of our projects and questions and stuff. So you guys can certainly reach out and join us that way. Uh, as of this morning, before I got on the bus, we were at 427 subscribers on Instagram, which means we are within arm's reach of a 500 subscriber giveaway already. What? Uh-huh. I saw that number, but that's, that's like, no, nah, the crazy, number can't be right. Crazy number of people following us on Instagram. 427 so, people, that's like at least 400 more than just our friends. Oh, that's at least 300 more than my grandmother. So <laughs> it's good. Uh, no, so once we get to the 500, I will go through the subscriber list and I will randomly generate a winner or two and we will do some giveaways. So I will have to make up pretty pictures and inform everybody once that happens. So yeah, I so will... follow us on Instagram. The oh, link yeah, is absolutely. down there or in the yeah, show notes. Yeah, and on Ravelry and stuff because we'll definitely talk and message on Ravelry. So that's always a thing as well. So now that we've got all the admin out of the way, we can talk about what's in our cup and eventually get to knitting. All right. I think yours is more interesting, so why don't you start? I want a drink. Okay, well, I'll start then. Uh, I have a an iced matcha latte from Little Sister, which is my second beverage from Little Sister today. I started out with a cappuccino at like 8.30 this morning, so I'm very caffeinated, and it is glorious. you got a long way to go, because you've got street festival check out in the afternoon, and you're hosting a dinner. Mm-hmm. She's got a long day, folks. I'm here for the street festival. Finish cleaning. I gotta go home to my cats while I'm staying for dinner. I am having Diana made some um, iced Buddha's blend tea from David's Tea. And I added sugar to it because I'm a sugar fiend. And some frozen raspberries. So it looks fancy and it tastes awesome. It tastes great. Well, the Buddha's one's quite mellow on its own, so it needs a bit of sugar to balance out the tart from the raspberries. In my mind, iced tea should be sweet. The Buddha's Blend on its own has a beautiful peach scent, but oh, yeah. you don't pick it up in the flavor You don't all. pick it up in the flavoring, no. So it's just like slightly flavored water with a lovely peach smell. Pretty so much. a yeah. bit of sugar and the raspberries just make it absolutely amazing. I came up with that on the fly. Yeah. I, I second the berry choice. Thanks, man. It's fantastic. So that is what's in our cup. Because it is too hot for warm beverages. Hey, maybe I'll try a vendor hot dog. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to try something new today. Tonight's dinner is homemade potato salad and steak. Mm. Yes, I, I heard you enticed Mr. B with steak. Steak! <laughs> it's a tradition I have with my dad. Mm. Well, in Canada Day, Mom likes to not cook. <laughs> That's fair. Which is perfectly legit. And for the last oh, six years or so, uh, my brother-in-law... It's not been my brother-in-law for that length of time. Has been with the family, because he doesn't. He doesn't have a huge family. They don't. They, don't, they celebrate even less than we do. So I'm not saying something. I'm not saying something because we don't celebrate a lot. So we would have uh, steaks on Canada Day. Mind you, my dad would go out and barbecue steaks on the first of January. So we, she has no problem barbecuing at any point in the year. So he would do steaks and other things and, and burgers and uh, well hot dogs because my niece is eleven and we prefer hot dogs. Mm-hmm. And then we would have potato salad and cut veggies for dinner. Oh, well, my parents, I'm sorry, I'm going to be constantly adjusting up because, well, it looks fine in person. It's a lot of cleavage for the internet. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of cleavage for the internet. So now that I'm on my own, I still like to do the steak and potato salad thing. So I'm going home to have, like, the beautiful, fancy one-inch cut, 20 bucks per steak steak, like... That is, so, that is steak. steak. That's capital S steak. That is a serious steak. It's a gorgeous marbling. There's no gristle. I'm very excited. And I'm going to have it with potato salad and then eat vegetables for the rest of the week because I generally don't buy meat. But it's a nice tradition. I won't barbecue it either. <laughs> It'll be done on the grill downstairs. Yeah. I'm calling tonight's dinner a barbecue because I'm making burgers, but it's not. Yeah, you guys are not a barbecue. I'll throw some liquid smoke in the pan and pretend, but it's... It's not you should. a barbecue. You're, you've got a balcony. You should get yourself a, a, we should get a balcony. Barbecue. A balcony. Barbecue. You guys would enjoy that. Yeah. I think it would be good. And our first diversion of the week is complete. <laughs> I was thinking of burgers. We're growing some green onions in a pot on the balcony. Are you? Yeah. I love green onions. So I cut some up and put them in my vegetarian burgers yesterday. So I'm really excited to see how those turn out. Because I'm smart and I pre-made all the food yesterday, so I just have to cook it today. It was always the better plan when you were hosting. Yeah. Such the better plan. Uh, shall we move into Wooly Workings? Yeah, let's move. Mo mo yes. You can tell it's going to be a good word today, folks. 
The best word day. Mm -hmm. I have the best words. You have the best words? All right. I have At two... least as good as two projects on somebody go. else. <laughs> At least as good as me. <laughs> um, I have two projects on the go. One project I did a row on, so it counts. Totally counts. And we both have a project we're starting. Yep. Which means I go first, because I have more, don't I? Uh, I have three, including the one we're starting. Crap. Okay, well, I'll go first. I got bored on Thursday, so I started another show. Whoa, fancy that. Me getting bored? No. <laughs> that sounds crazy. This is called the Butterfly Prayer Shawl. And that's because the fancy little stitches, which are chains, uh, I'm crocheting it, obviously, uh, make little butterflies in the shawl. I'm doing it in another gradient cake by Carrion. Uh, Caron. I don't know why I call it Carrion. That doesn't sound nearly as good. And if I pull up my phone here for a second and flip through my saved images, I took a photo of what the, the, the name was. Uh, hopefully it's not too fuzzy and I can no, figure it out. Down. Pistachio. Thank you. <sighs> Karen cake and pistachio. In pistachio, which is white to light green to medium green to a darker green to an olive green back to white again. It's a very nice gradient. It's very springy. It is. A very, and I figured that would look really good with butterflies. It does. It looks so, fantastic. It's going to take two cakes, which is the same as the virus shawl. So it'll be the same size as the virus shawl when I'm, when I'm all done, which is totally fine. I'm just about done my first cake now. So I'm about halfway done. And I, again, started on Thursday. I suppose if you wanted a smaller shawl, one cake would do you just fine. Yeah, absolutely, if you just wanted a little one, but I prefer bigger baby yep. shawls. You like blanket shawls. I do prefer blanket shawls. Blankets, so. if you will. As some would say. <laughs> so that's been what I, I pulled out on Thursday to work on. Uh, I had my first physio on Friday, so I am technically allowed to knit. <laughs> Woo! Uh, for incredibly short periods of time, and when short periods, I mean... I'm going to cast on a project today, and I, if I make it to row eight today, we're miles ahead of where I thought I was going to be at this point, because my wrist is still very sore, and it's going to take a very long time to heal, but my fingers are healing nicely. So I took my socks into my physio appointment, because this was my physiotherapist who would be making the decision for me, and she said, yes, I could, because she watched the motion. She prefer if I learned right-handed, I giggled at her. She said, that's very docile. <laughs> So, uh, I can continue work on my June socks, even though we're in July. Meh. This time it wasn't my fault. So, well, technically it was. I'm the one who injured myself. So, I am making a pair of two-at-a-time toe-up in the Dreaming the Spring colorway by Die For You, spelled E-W-E. And they are on my uh, 25 millimeter. um, what am I looking for? Chowgu Red Lace, which I adore have a fantastic cord, and next time I buy new needles, I'm going to get that brand. Because oh. that cord is gorgeous. I have been looking at doing an internet order for a few more, because I really, I mean, really like, like Knitter's them. Pride is good, but that's just like... The Knitter's Pride is wonderful, but I love these chow goos. But so. that, that cord is something else. Oh, it's so pretty. And they've got a whole bunch of different sets and stuff. And I want to do the Evening Star Shawl. So I think I'm going to order it in in the lace and the right size for that. Because that'll just... Yeah. Yeah, I'm so pumped. So, I literally knit the front on one side and knit the back on the other. That's it. That's all I've done. That is all <laughs> the knitting I have done in almost three weeks. And it hurt. So I don't know how much knitting I'm going to get done today with our cast on. But that's okay! <laughs> as long as you cast it on, and I think it's like a four-stitch cast on, it counts. counts. So, I have two left. So you're up now. Okay, well... Where I'm going to go with my sock. Absolutely. So, Dragon Fiber Bags. Firefly reference. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Love this bag. And it's got space print on the inside, in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> I love nerdy knitting stuff. I'm such a sucker for nerdy knitting stuff. So I have here my also June socks, uh, which I'm calling my cinema socks, because the speckle which is a white base, white base? It's a white base with uh, teal and navy blue and sort of a mustard yellow speckle. Mm -hmm. uh, is called Cinema from Cloud9 Fiberworks. Nope. No? Midnight Cravings. Midnight Cravings, oh my goodness. <laughs> I've only been talking about this for how long? I'm sorry. Here's the holiday yarn I bought you. How it dare is. you? The girls are gonna find you and they're going to so shake sorry. their finger at you sternly. 
It's my midnight cravings. It was a sock set. I should know this. I do the show notes and everything. And I think I still have she the ball does. bands in here. I can't believe I got that wrong. I'm sorry. She does the show notes. I do not. Anyway, and this teal color that is my heel and my toe and eventually my cuff is called Curtain Call. <sighs> yeah. So I was... I have not got a lot done on this this week. Didn't have as many meetings, I guess. Also, I started riding my bike to work, so I don't have my bus knitting time. But I finished my heel, and I just have a few more rows to do above, because above the fish lips kiss heel, you have to do about an inch of plain stockinette um, before you go into your pattern. Uh, so I'm just about there. And then I'm going to be doing the cable up the back of the leg from Les Chaussettes de la Strumfette. Hey, which, you're getting better at that. Yes. It is a free pattern on Ravelry uh, in French. I don't believe there is an English version in any case. I downloaded the French version because I'm going to learn French knitting funny. terms. If there is an English version, you just downloaded the wrong version? Well, I mean, the entire project page is in French and it's a free pattern, so I don't imagine probably. she's probably put in the effort to make an English version of a free pattern. Which is totally fair for a free pattern. Anyway, they're just uh, nice plain vanilla socks with a cute little cable at the back of the leg, so I figured I could probably manage that. And I'm thinking, because I'm a little bit worried about um, running out of the yarn, I probably shouldn't be worried, I'll probably have leftovers, but I think well, just to be sure... You have a very large foot, but okay. I think just to be sure, uh, I'm going to get up to... I'm, I'm going to get up the leg and not do the cuff, I'll just put it on waist yarn and then do the other sock up to the same point. Mm, and make sure that you're good. Okay, make sure fine. I have enough of the cinema to yeah. do the leg uh, and then make sure that I yeah. split my remaining uh, curtain call appropriately. No, that makes a lot of sense. Because also I would like to make them as tall as I possibly can. Yes. And show off all of this gorgeous yarn. Um, I agree, because it is freaking pretty. It was a hard choice, Matt. They have some really nice sock sets. I'm just gonna... Ooh. Bless you. <laughs> Wrap up your sock and tuck it away. I'm gonna put it on my foot. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this sock. I actually made it the right size. I don't have to give it to you when I'm done. <laughs> I get to keep it. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> what size of foot are you? Uh, ladies, ten. Why? <laughs> try this sock because I made it too big. <laughs> sure, I'll take a free handmade sock. I figured. No oh, problem. right, that's what I was playing the set for. I wanted to check. It looks good. Oh, such pretty colors. Oh, that's... Should I should have bought a set for myself. I was checking it to see if it had any, like, I don't know, cashmere or something in it. Oh, no, they're just, they're super washes. Yeah, just but that they're soft. just, they're, it's just really soft. It's yeah. softer than the other super wash merino that I used. Yeah, so. well, so there's feels really good. variations in super wash merino. The things you learn when you start looking at yarn bases, I have such, such a small amount of knowledge, it's not even funny. I feel like a first year student in a master's program when it comes to yarn bases and what yarn content is, you guys. There's so much to learn. <sighs> feels really good, so. But yeah, no, oh, there's, there's super I... washes, beautiful. If you would like to learn a lot about different yarn types, I have a book you can borrow. Sure. Cause... That we have not reviewed because it involves reading the whole darn book. <laughs> and that's... It's a large book. So I should take it, read it, give it to you, and then go, your darn. Possibly. <laughs> we'll discuss. Remind me about this later, and you can borrow the book. Sure. We'll do. Might not take it home today. I got a lot of stuff on the go. Fair. All right. In other news, I started another granny blanket. I did the math, which, by the way... I don't have a scale to weigh my yarn. So to weigh my yarn, I must weigh myself, and I take a photo. And then I weigh myself with the project in my hands, if it's bulky like a blanket, and I don't recall all the yardage specifically. Then I have to do the math. <laughs> so I have to take away my weight, convert it to grams, take the grams and convert it into what it would be in yards per gram at the weight of the yarn, and then take the yarn in yards and convert it to meters. <laughs> so I was thinking about buying a yarn scale anyway. Uh, it's on my list and it creeps up higher to the top of the list. 
very quickly as I'm doing the stash dash for the year. I, I was thinking because just... I'm my oh. stash dash is a lace weight shawl and some socks, which none of that is bulky enough to weigh on a scale, like a human scale. No. So I'm thinking I'm going before the end of stash dash. I'm going to order a yarn scale, and uh, you are welcome to borrow it. That would be great. I mean, and it's always for the big projects, like my blanket projects, because I've had some of these squares for so long, I don't yeah. remember what the yarn is, and I certainly don't have the yardage for granny square. That is a put it on a scale and weigh it. But if I do it when the blanket's okay, do you want me finished, to take this in sure. if I do it, it when, the when the blanket's finished, the blanket's heavy enough it registers as a weight difference. Oh, I really like this square. This has because good contrast. This uh, purple and white thing. Yeah, that was really good. I don't even remember what day that was. There was 365 days. I don't remember all the days. Um, so I started my Aunt Jerry's, or Geraldine's, lap blanket, which is made out of more 365 day squares. To balance the squares out, I have a gray charcoal color in a red heart soft, fashion soft, fashion soft, which I am double crocheting the border and then crochet, a single crocheting that double crochet border together. So I got a nice little ridge for texture details. My Aunt Jerry is a lot closer to fully blind than I am, so for her a lot of it's about texture and feel, so I picked a lot of different colors and patterns that had different textured crochet stitches to them so that she could feel the differences mm -hmm. more so than perhaps see the differences. So some of them she'll be able to make out, the purple and white one she'll be able to make out the difference, but she can also feel where the texture changes and what's going on with it. Mm -hmm. So I have officially made all of my, I call them stripes, because it's a row. <laughs> And I have seven rows of six stripes of these guys, all crocheted together and ready to go. As I crochet the center border between each of them, I have been going in and weaving in any ends that I didn't weave in when I was doing the project last year. Which is like none of them? Yeah, some of them were woven in, but most weren't. Which is fine. I don't consider weaving in ends that big of a problem. I sit down, I plug in an anime show, and I go. So the only ends I've got are the ends from my gray charcoal, which will disappear because I will crochet them into the final border of the project. So now that I've got that done, I need to go through and make the section between each of my rows of gray bigger. So I might actually need to go back and get a third ball of gray. Oh goodness. To make it bigger, to balance out the absolute wild color palette that we have going on here. Yeah, the, the gray is, surprisingly, the gray is really working to tie this all together. It is, and it was such such the right call color-wise to pick. Because, so. like, this this does not go with... Not even remotely. This does not go with that, but nope. when it's separated and with gray, it, act, it works it looks really, really well, good. actually. Yep, so I'm super pumped at how well the gray is working. So, slow but steady progress is made on that, and you have to remember that one crochet throw... I like that stitch. Whatever that is. I would have to look at it closer. Uh, one crocheted throw in the size that I make, which is big enough for a single bed. So it is a good sized couch throw, mm -hmm. but it will also work if you're out camping or you take it for a picnic blanket. Like it's it's versatile that way because it's all in acrylic. You can wash the crap out of it. We're looking at five kilometers worth of yarn because I just did the math for my grandmother's <laughs> and the worsted weight. So these are not small projects. So if I finish another one of these, I'm at 10k. Whoa! It's 5,000 yards worth of worsted weight yarn. That's a lot. It's a lot. Well, it's because people, because when you're knitting, you take your one and you're making a two-stranded fi fiber. When you're crocheting, you end up with a three-stranded fiber. Yeah. It's a slightly different craft, and that uses more yarn. That's why, size-wise. That's crazy. And a lot of math, you guys. So much math. And Phaedra helped me by getting on the scale the first time, so I had to do all my measurements twice. I love my cat. I also understand cats are jerks. <laughs> so that's the other one I've been working on. That's going to take a week or two to put together, because there's only so many rows of double crochet and gray you can do before your brain goes, I must do something else or I will shoot myself. <laughs> Or your cat lays down on your work and you're done for the day. Pet me, human. Mm -hmm. I demand it. Pretty much. So, I'm working on that. Which only leaves our cast on today. Or I got to talk about my wedding shawl. <gasps> it's true, you do. You do that. I'm going to work on more of my prayer shawl. I think it's funny I'm doing a prayer shawl. Alright. I fell down the rabbit hole of Fiber Spider. Yeah. 
and all of his wonderful tutorials on knitting. And that's how I ended up starting this one, because he was doing a tutorial on it. I started watching it, and then I went, why am I just literally sitting and watching a crochet tutorial when I could, like, be making what he's showing me? So I went and got yarn. <laughs> and a hook. <laughs> Fair. Okay, so, teacup bag, also by Dragon Fiber Bags. Because, Dragon Fiber Bags. She's a good local bag maker. I'm I, so excited. When I was at Wellesley the other day, I looked for the teacup bag, and of course it was long gone or the teapot oh, imagine yeah. teapot it bag. would have been gone long ages gone. ago that's okay her bags are not the bags you sit and wait on they're no. the bags you buy when you see them yeah anyway i kind of figured that would be the case so this is the even star shawl i'm gonna get closer here and can't i'm gonna put that there now i can hold this proper so this is the even star shawl with my all of my fancy stitch markers, some of my less fancy stitch markers, and then I got into the clippy stitch markers. There's, There's so 28 many, repeats around. So I ran out of markers. stitch markers. So many stitch markers. All like, I, I, I only have half a package of clippy stitch markers left. All of my other stitch markers are in this project. Oh, it's crazy. Just saying is for Christmas you want stitch markers? <coughs> I want to never knit 560 stitches in a round after this shawl. That's fair. I think you will have to break. So, I'm oh, into chart three. Is what's going on here. Um, which doesn't look super interesting yet, because I'm only just into chart three. Let's see if I can... So there's, there's this really interesting ridgy bit of uh, pearls and knit through the back loop. And then there's some yarn over stuff on the side, and I'm not really sure how... I, I really looking at the chart. I have no idea what this is ultimately going to look like. So I'm going to be really interested to see this. Uh, I have not accomplished a whole lot. I uh, moved my stitch marker, my progress keeper this morning. Uh, I have accomplished not quite three rounds, because again, 560 stitches. Also, this will reappear in fiber flubs. It usually does. Yeah. That's okay. So that's why three rounds. As of the, your wedding date in August, in July, I'm going to start counting down the week by week for you, just to stress you out even more. Yeah, I know. That's okay. I'm already counting. I've got a counter on my phone, and it's like a number of days that I'm like, oh, that's not very many days. Sometime in the teens in August. 18th? Yep. It is... A month and a half away. Oh, that was weird to say out loud. <laughs> Pardon me while I have an existential crisis. <laughs> am I old enough to do that? Yep. I'm still not sure I'm old enough to do that. Yep. You've been legally old enough to do that since you were 18. I don't know if they're playing DDR upstairs or what. It is a very serious workout session. Or they're moving furniture. Entirely possible. Okay, well, existential crisis. Um, we'll just put a pin in that and I'll have that later. You're good? You yeah. sure? Uh, well, I'll just delay it for a while. Uh, I'll okay. make fun of you later then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we can talk about the cow. Now we can talk about the cow? Yes. We are really excited, you guys. A day. A day as of recording is cast on day for Across the Prairies at Cal. She's so exciting! Justin's doing a Stephen West show again. <laughs> I'm gonna actually do the Stephen West show. Do you remember that time when I was gonna start the eyeball show? Yep. And I got like two rows in and yep. then never touched it again. I do. Yeah, I'm gonna actually do this one. Oh well, it's a knit. I'm still gonna do the eyeball show too. It's in one of those project bags. There's a knit along camera going on. Yeah. You have to enter for prizing and other people's prizes, so yeah. it must be done. Now. It will be done. Okay, so officially starting as of July the 1st, running until the end of September, we are participating with three other amazing podcasts, Feathered Stitches, A Tale of Two Knitters, and what used to be the Stitching Sisters, who have now rebranded as Cozy Up Knits. Their logo is so freaking adorable. It's not even, like, it is, it's adorkable. Adorkable. That is how adorable it is. It is adorkable. Uh, we all started today. Um, uh, as far as I know, both ladies from Tale of Two Knitters and the Feathered Stitches podcast are joining us, but only two of the four sisters are joining in on the uh, Stephen West Exploration Show. So, it is a Ravelry one. 
So if you use Instagram, use the hashtag across the prairies cow so we notice and can like and see what you guys are working on because it's a Stephen West pattern. All the colors should be happening. And talking randomly, just let me finish my thing so I grab my bag. That's how good I am, folks. And uh, you can triple up on your entries, quadruple up on your entries. All of us have been very vocal and adamant about the, yeah, no, enter all of the middle lungs with your shawl. Do it up. All of the things. Yeah. So we can only enter three, but you guys can enter four. Unless you're the other podcasters, and then it's still three. <laughs> hmm? I'm just being silly on camera. I'm being silly. Do you want to show off your colors and that yellow and green bag? I, uh... I only, With have robots? Two, I only have two real project bags, so I fished out a, uh, I go to a lot of tech conferences, so I have a lot of tech conference swag bags left over, so that's what I right. use for project bags, so I have, like, one of those... I mean, you work in the tech industry and you yeah. go to tech conferences? That sounds crazy. I don't know. So I have one of these, like, drawstring backpack style bags. You know what I'm talking about, probably. But this one is from RoboCup 2014, when it was in Brazil. Ah! And uh, I actually didn't go to this one. Uh, Chris brought me this back. Oh, cute. But uh, this is what my project is living in. Shall I go first? Yes, absolutely. I was just really excited about the bag. I unearthed it in the closet, and I've forgotten about it, and I was excited about it. That's fair. Okay. It's a very, very cheerful bag. It's perfect for a Stephen West pattern. I thought so. Uh, if I do this in order of what colors things are going to be, that makes the most amount of sense. Okay, so this is going to be my color A. Uh, this is Weekend Thoughts by Cog Yarns, and it is a white base with varying shades of purple and pink and blue speckles, mostly purple. But there's a little bit of pink and blue in there. It's almost like your favorite color is purple. It's almost like my favorite color is purple. <laughs> but then it's got a nice white to just... Bam. It's a nice, bright color for you. That is a bold color choice. Yes. I will make things in highlighter pink so that for me it's you quite know muted, I, but I went to I'm the crazy. little store with the intent to get something like highlighter pink or orange or something and it's it hard just... to find and it's not you the pink might have worked all right the orange was just wrong somehow that's fair it was not the right color of orange I like pumpkin orange better yeah I'm a fan of the pumpkin fall harvesty oranges and reds oh man deep jewel tone colors did I say it was going to be my B, I believe? I don't know. You didn't tell me. <laughs> no. I wrote this. I wrote it down as a comment on my PDF, and my phone is over there, and I don't want to go get it. Okay. So I believe I decided my color B is going to be this greenish gray, which is naturally dyed with copper. I'm just getting the fire on you. Mm, so I'm good. <laughs> so this greeny copper gray. One? Oh, that yeah, one. Yeah. Yep. This is my color B because it's dyed. Oh, yes. This is by Tog and Thel, naturally dyed with copper. Cog and Thel have some amazing yarns. Another local dyer, which is super cool. Uh, yeah. Actually, the only one of these that isn't local is Cog Yarns. I believe she's from Saskatchewan. But that's technically still in our country. Still, still so relatively local. We're still relatively still local. Still in the prairies. Still in the prairies. Oh, that was even unintentional. Well done. I did oh. not do so well. <laughs> okay. So I was reading the pattern, and it said B and C go together in the brioche section. So yes, I figured the greeny gray and the dark green... That would look good together, yeah. Because then you get that pop in the brioche section. Yeah. So the dark green, that is like a piney green, shades of piney green, is Unseely. And that's Cloud9 Fiberworks, isn't it? This is Cloud9 Fiberworks, for real this time. For real this time? For She's real. a Winnipeg local. She is. We know Daria. Daria has some wonderful yarns. She actually, as of today, is part of the uh, indie dyers who are um, oh, doing, doing that. If I want... Uh, if I want exposure. Sure, I'll get my tits out. Yeah. Which, Which I'm going to Etsy shop some of those yarn colors because I, I really need to own some from that collection because I yeah. want to go, oh, this is from the If I Want Exposure, I'll Get My Tits Out collection. I feel like that needs to go with a... Can we do that after we record? Yes. That needs to happen today. I feel like some kind of shawl thing... Needs to happen. Yeah. With that and some like sparkly dark gray or black. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so my color D is going to be... Um, band is off. Okay, well, the band's off. That's this fine. is naturally dyed with marigold from Todd and Bell. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Beautiful gold color uh, because it's going to go with this green color in the slip stitches section, which seems to make sort of a checkered pattern. Ooh, yes, So that's true. I figured the green and the gold would go really nicely for the checkered pattern. It will. 
and the uh, green and the greenish gray, the green and the copper, which is a greenish gray, would go nicely together with the, the brioche, and then pops of white with purple speckle in between them. And also, uh, color D has the largest garter section, and I have nothing in my wardrobe that has like a gold or a yellow. I really like gold and yellow. Um, I don't know that it necessarily goes with my skin tone, but it's, not, it's a Stephen West shawl, so I don't care for this. And so this is going to be my largest section of just plain color, and I'm excited about that. I think it would look great, so I'm pumped. So I'm really excited. Those are my colors. All right. I have not decided what colors are going where yet for mine. However, I uh, removed my uh, triple treat shawl that I was working from, working on from my cappuccino bag that I got for my birthday from Dragon Fiber Bags. Diana kindly got for me. You got needles, you guys. You got the needles. My four millimeter rib chogu lace on the forty inch quarter, sitting in my bag, ready to go. I I should admit. Um... These are only three and a half millimeter. Ah. I don't actually have any spare four millimeter, but I'm gonna knit this one continental, and my gauge is a, a lot looser. looser on continental. Yeah, no, that's fair. That works. So I picked up two skeins from uh, Die for You, E W E, which are going to be my lighter colors in the shawl because I decided to do something a little more dramatic. I have a gray in the no, that was a campfire colorway. <laughs> Oops, my camera's over here. Which, is that the one that had speckles slightly? This has got a light speckle to it. Which I cannot see in person or on, co or on camera. It's really buried in there. So it'll it'll pop up. <laughs> it'll pop up, but it's got like a reddy purple oh, yeah, slight yeah, okay, speckle. Right. I can see a little bit. Which really goes well with one of the um, uh, Knitting Wolf uh, luxury fiber yarns that I have. The other one I picked up, I picked these up when we were at the Blue Hills Fiber Festival uh, out in Carberry a couple weeks ago. Uh, I also picked up a second skein that's put a spring in your step, which is green. It's a more yellow-green in person. It's looking a little bit bluer on camera. It's definitely not as blue as it's popping up on camera, which is okay. But yeah, no, it's definitely got uh, a sort of a lighter yellow tinge to the higher points to it. I don't know what's going to be A, B, C, or D yet. I, that decision I have to make once we're done recording. I've been putting it off, and I've just sort of been looking at it and going, Oh, these are so pretty! <laughs> so I don't, I don't know yet, guys. My decision-making processes are apparently not that hot right now. <laughs> and then I've got two skeins that I started with that I had one from the... Oh, Lord. I didn't do that because it's too dark in here for me to read tags. Okay. So, so this is the Knitting Wolf Luxury Yarns. It is. Socket to Me Baby Base. It is. Which is 70 merino, 20 cashmere, and 10 nylon. It's just beautifully squishy and a beautifully rich dark color. And you're uh, going to see when I'm done showing all the individual colors, I'll stack them on top of each other so you can see them all put together. So Eleganza extravaganza. Mm -hmm. Hashtag knitting wolf drag stars. And then my last one is uh, another knitting same wolf. Same base. Same base. Beautiful base. Violet drag wolf. So pretty. So I know for sure I'm going to hang on to the bands, but I'm not going to worry too much about color orientation, because I'm not super positive on how I want to do this yet. And it's the it's the Knitted Wolf, because I want to make sure I get the right rotation going, but those are all of my colors together. I feel like if you make the light one your contrast... I'm thinking I might do best with the light one as the contrast, given the richness of the other ones, mm -hmm. but my two lighter ones, which are the Die For You ones, so my green one, which is put a spring in your step, and now that was a campfire, just... I want to say juxtapose the darker jewel tones that I'm getting from the Knitted Wolf colorways. But yep. they're they're super gorgeous. We're going to uh, cake up Diana's, and then we're going to take some photos before we start knitting. So you will see the Instagram photo post of both of our shawl sets uh, today. We're going to work on that right after we're done recording. So that will start today. Woo! And it runs to the end of September. All right. But that's it for our biggest section this week, which was woolly wear things. Yeah. You're up. Fiber flubs. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. I'm not going to bring up the shawl again because there's nothing to show. But uh, so I fixed my thing, my, my flub from last week where I was 
just one stitch out and one section was missing a stitch. Uh, so I uh, just, uh, I came, when I came up to that stitch and I'm like, oh no, I'm supposed to knit two together right here, but there's only one stitch. Guess I'll just knit the stitch. There, now I have the right number of stitches. Problem solved. Uh, my new problem is that I had to learn how to do twisted decreases this morning, which involved reading the pattern, reading the pattern notes, trying it, thinking that didn't look right, reading the pattern notes again, undoing it, redoing it, going to YouTube, still thinking that didn't look right, going to YouTube, <laughs> watching at least three separate videos. I was like, YouTube tried here somewhere. None of which showed doing the, the things that were called the same thing, none of which showed it doing the same way. So I tried all those different ways. With the end result that there's about six different ways of doing this twisted slip slip knit stitch around my shawl before I... So there's somewhere I'm doing it completely wrong. There's somewhere I'm trying it one way, somewhere I'm doing it another way, and I think at least one more way before I finally decided that the last way, which turned out to be the way that was written in the pattern notes, fancy that, was the right way that looked the rightest. It looked looked the most correct. It looked the rightest. Yes, it did. There's our title for this week's episode. It looked the rightest. It looked the most correct. Okay. Fine. Yep. I'm going with it looked the rightest. Okay, it looked the rightest. <laughs> uh, yes, so I have uh, several unright stitches in uh, my shawl now because twisted decreases are weird. On the bright side, I can ask so many questions when I go to do mine. Yes, you can ask all the questions. All the questions. We just quite an inch. Okay. It's a thing. On so the bright side, you got it all. Club. You got it all ironed out. Yeah, I got it sorted out now. Okay, that's but good. that's why it. <laughs> I was that little sister. You've probably seen my Instagram post by now, where I'm I'm living the Instagram lifestyle, just chilling in the my, coffee shop. Yeah, with my cappuccino and my scone and my lace shawl. Yep. Yeah. It uh, it's very Instagrammable in there. But, uh, yeah, I was there for nearly two hours, and I didn't finish one row. <laughs> Part of that was because I was eating my scone. And just catching up on, like, admin stuff. But a lot of it was that I spent at least half an hour figuring out how to do this one stitch. Ugh. While having two conversations on via text. One's with me. Yep. The other was with my mom. Cool beans. 60 stitches. It takes a long time. Especially when some of them are weird and twisted. It really does. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Yarn on the go. I think you're going to be so excited when you're done that shawl and it's no longer in fiber clubs. Oh yeah. Fiber clubs has been my exclusive section for way too long. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> the plus side, it means I'm learning a lot and hopefully all of our listeners and viewers are also learning a lot along with me so that should they ever decide to knit this ridiculously beautiful shawl it's not they can, frightening. <laughs> they can not make the same mistakes that I'm making and make their own mistakes. I really wouldn't worry about it. I mean, if you don't try, you don't know if you like it or not, and you'll never get good if you don't practice. Yep. I like the look of lace shawls, so I'm going to practice. I mean, my first few are going to look crazy, and that's fine. It's all about learning. On the plus side, I am now not afraid of any lace whatsoever. Those crazy, ridiculous, giant <laughs> Russian lace stole shawl the things. Estonian lace that I really like yeah that we both really like if yeah we're honest. I'm, I'm not afraid of that anymore good we're gonna because do some it's of those. way more repetitive than this yes so it would actually be easier yeah yeah I'm, I'm and the super... rows don't get bigger as you go because it's a rectangle the rows don't get bigger as you go because it's a rectangle makes perfect sense to me so I'm totally okay with tackling some ridiculous Estonian lace after this because it'll be easier that's funny. And done. Done and done. Uh, Alright. Uh, what was I just talking about? Yarn on the go. Yeah. Uh, yarn on the go. I was at Little Sister this morning. We've reached hibernation cycle in Jocelyn's year. Jocelyn doesn't go out in the summer unless she absolutely has to, so I don't go anywhere or do anything right now. <laughs> By choice. I don't like summer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can I can understand. It's hot out. I must love Knit Club because I'm planning a picnic excursion for all of you. <laughs> uh, the other place that my yarn went was Work Craft Club. 
uh, my sock came with me, and you may have seen on Instagram the picture of my foot with the sock on it up on the boardroom table. What was that during craft club? That was during craft club. We've uh, taken over boardroom now. Oh, geez, you're that big. My goodness. Yeah. Hello, all of Diana's work, craft club people. Hi. I'm Jocelyn. I think some of them actually watch us too, so hi! Uh, yeah. Very, I'm not, not very big, don't have a go this week. Uh, but you have some so little time. I do. I managed to, uh, get the patterns, finished tracing them out, got them all cut down, uh, in, on paper, paper. I just have a big craft roll of brown paper. And <laughs> from there I washed my fabric, uh, my lining as well as my outside layer, and I have cut my lining out. So I'm going to start by putting it together in the lining, because if I do it wrong, the lining is cheaper than the outside fabric. So it's my way of doing a mock-up. So I've got the right pattern pieces laid out, and I'm going to cut pieces tomorrow. So we will see how that goes. Slow and steady wins the race. This is going to be the longest format for the coat, because I need to iron out all of the alterations I'm making to a pattern I've never done before. And then once that's done, repeating the coat twice more is a lot easier. It's just being different sizes. So I made the mannequin for my dress for my size again. Uh, it was set at Diana's size, so <laughs> I had to fix that and adjust her so she was the right size. So when I put the coat on to make sure it's fitting properly, when I've got pins set in it, uh, I'm not uh, got too big of a coat for too small of a mannequin. I mean, I'll put it on myself as well, but. I like resting it on the mannequin dress form when I'm doing things like hemming lengths and stuff. So. Oh yeah, well it's so much easier to work on a thing that is not you. <sighs> Absolutely. It also won't get mad when I spin it around in circles five or six times and pin it accidentally. <laughs> I would get mad at myself. So that's the way that works for me. But that's it really. It's it's slow and steady progress for this first coat and then the other two will fly. One, four. And uh, hopefully my wrist continues to heal up and my fingers continue to feel better so I can do more stuff. Though I'm currently participating in two knit alongs as of this morning, knit alongs, read alongs as of this morning. So uh, we'll see how my free time goes. Mm -hmm. I love audiobooks for a reason, folks. What did I tell you? I've uh, joined the book club at work. Yep. Yeah. 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 I don't know where you think you're going to have time for that. No idea. It's pretty much only going to work out if we read the Expanse books because that's what I'm reading right now. Oh, I need to steal a book from someone else's TBR pile. It might be yours for one of my challenges for the Buy a New Bibliothon later this month. I am currently doing the Tome Topple. Okay. And the books must be over 500 pages to count on the Tome Topple in printed version. I tend to do those on Audible because they make for great epic stories that I can listen to while I'm sewing stuff. Which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I am currently listening to The Waking Fire, which is the first in the Draconic Moral series. I don't remember the name of the author. But the other one that started today that I'm going to jump in on is a uh, read-along that says, uh, uh, read-along, eh? It's Canadian-themed. So nice. all of your authors are Canadian, and the challenges are really interesting. So I got a couple books that I want to reread that fit into the challenge markers. I've been looking for an excuse to reread the Book of Negroes. I now have one. I'm going to do that. <laughs> but there's a couple of other ones that have been on my list that I haven't been able to get to that I want to read, so this gives me the great opportunity to do so. So that's this week. It starts today. All right. Well, I guess we know what you're doing with your evening. Two, three, four. Uh, we're creating a TBR and some Instagram posts. You would be correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, browsing my public library online because it's closed today. <laughs> yep. Nice. Which works. But And... Knitting and visiting with my uh, Mr. B, because he'll be over for steaks and potato salad tonight. Sweet, that's my inch done. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. gonna put this down so because I need to read a poem after that. Oh my, go you. Actually, no, I don't need the pattern until the back. I can need I can knit the front of the sock. Okay, so you're gonna knit the front of the sock. I'm gonna knit the front of the sock. I'm done talking about sewing, for the moment, and uh, I digressed into books, which means we're on to events. Uh, wool gathering briefly. Oh, wool gathering, yeah, because we that's were... where we stick all the admin stuff. We were going to yammer about our, uh, we have a new Patreon! I have finally finished the Patreon stuff. It took me longer than I wanted. Again, I'm finger hunting when I type, so you just, you, like, if I reply via text, you don't even want to know how long it takes. Because it's, it's depressing. Because <laughs> I'm used to both fingers, and I have one thumb. That's all I can text with right now. Singular digit. That's rough. It's hard. First world problem. Super. 
It, it is up and it is live. We've got three different tiers for everybody. So I'm working on the extra special content for the additional two tiers uh, and getting the rest of that stuff set up and ready to go so that it, it will be available for people. So it is by month, not by episode, because we put out an episode every week. So that can get pricey really quickly. So I made the decision to do that by month that for charge. Is- Totally so. reasonable. Also, some months have five weeks, some months have four three weeks, or yeah, so yeah. just and then sometimes we're I don't know, life happens and the episode doesn't get up on time. Yeah, and, and yeah, okay. So it'll it'll be interesting, but I got I figured that was the most balanced way to do it. So the fines are going to let us do more giveaways, more knit alongs, and upgrade our equipment, so we can start taking you guys with those places. So rather than recording on a tablet, which is what we currently record on, mm-hmm. uh, I'm looking at saving towards and getting us a proper little digital camera. So when we do road trips, like first goal, if we've got a camera for Knit City, I can vlog Knit City for everybody. So I can I can do this additional content for people if I've got the equipment for it. So that we're not just like on some kind of weird rectangular phone thing. and uh. That's sort of the goal and the plan. So that's, that's what we're working to. And then that way we can bring you guys better, clearer pictures, clearer audio. And, and make your guys' listening or viewing experience more enjoyable. So that is the purpose and goal of the Patreon. It's just to sort of let us continue doing our hobby work and sort of make the, the programming or the back the background admin stuff for the podcast about as net neutral as we can swing it. I'd be, I would love if the podcast were net neutral. <laughs> That'd be exciting. <laughs> it is currently an expense. Yes, it is currently an expense on both our parts. So it's a thing, and that's fine. We knew this was a, was a thing, so yeah. we can make it net neutral. Sweet. Yeah, you've been doing this. As I, I figure it's a hobby, and you can spend money on your hobby. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, once you've been doing your hobby for a while, and you have a following, maybe try and make it a net neutral hobby. Yeah, it's always been my goal. My books are pretty much net neutral. Uh, so what are what are our three levels? You gave them cute names. I did give them cute names. Uh, the dollar level, which is the thanks, I, you were able to donate a buck. That's huge. Like not everybody can donate. Uh, that is the short rows. Uh, it's a thank you from us and uh, probably I will arrange for uh, like a Ravelry shout out for everybody to link them in Ravelry groups or something else but for the moment it, it is a thank you from us an email thank you that's just like because it's huge like that's not everybody can donate not everybody has money to donate so that you can that's amazing uh, if you can give five dollars I forgot what name you have I spent a, I spent three hours staring at my computer screen creating <laughs> names I'm really bad at it you guys uh, no, really, I forgot what name I gave the five dollar backers. Um, Can't remember it now either. It'll be in the show notes. Yeah, this is linked in the show notes. Yeah, in the end bit where we put all our links. Yeah, yeah, yeah in the description box. Called... It'll it'll be yeah, in the show it's, notes. It's in the probably. description box, also in the show notes if you're a listener. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and for that five dollar one gets everybody uh, extra video every month. So if you donate at the five dollar letter five dollar level, you get the thank you because everybody gets a thank you. Uh, and you get bonus content once a month. If you are like supremely capable of doing it and are able to donate at 10 bucks, which is like a lot of money, um, you get the video, you get the thank you, and we'll have a monthly Patreon prize draw for people who donate the month before. Probably towards the end of the following month. So that prize could be a skein of yarn or a free pattern. I think I have probably no... to save on shipping costs, it'll be a pattern. A lot of the times it's going to be a free pattern because that's just easier for me to stock your Ravelry and find a pattern on your wish list and gift it to you. Not even so much price, it's just time-wise it's easier for me. Because <laughs> I can do that all at home for my pajamas. I don't have to leave my house. And as we've noticed in the summer, I don't like leaving my house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's primarily what it's going to be, but that's gonna that's that's the big beefy one. That's for people who are able to to help us do a lot and sort of make a larger contribution, which any level is super appreciated. Cool. But I got that done this week. I swear they have cute names that we don't remember. Oh, I just and I worked really hard on them too, and I don't know why I don't recall them. Oh man. Oh. You know what's really funny is because I'm editing it this week. I might actually throw up the names on here. <laughs> Bam! Bam! I might not. I don't know. We'll see how long it takes because I have to have this up on Tuesday so you can uh, do your stuff on Wednesday. Yep. <sighs> okay, that was Wool Gathering uh, Events. We already talked about the Across the Prairies Cal in we great detail. did in great detail. Uh, we have our Year of the Sock. Hashtag Year of the Sock. Question mm-hmm. mark. 
uh, knit a pair of adult socks every month and post them in the monthly finished objects thread on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. uh, along with this episode will go up the July finished objects thread. And the idea is just to learn to knit socks, to expand your sock knitting knowledge, and to have 12 pairs of hand knit socks at the end of the year. Uh, all of you are doing so much better than we are doing. There's been some amazing sock patterns. My sock favorite collection is growing very quickly this year. So many, I, my, my yarn favorite pile is growing. <laughs> that's already huge in my mind, so yeah, that's fair. Oh, there's this striping yarn and this, this striping, striping yarn. yarn. Yeah. Oh, love it. Adrian from uh, the uh, Fiber Friends podcast. I never remember that she's got a, a subscription thing for self-striping, like rainbow colored yarn. Mm -hmm. And I keep thinking, I need to do that, but I don't listen. I, I'm not paying enough attention when she mentions the name to register what's going on, so I never write it down. Do I go back? No. Uh, and ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and to do that, I'm just like, oh, one day, I think I'm gonna do that, because boy me, do I love rainbow striped socks. And I think I need to get a subscription so I get a, a new one every month. Yep, that'd be, be just a lovely little box of chocolate. It would be so delightful. No, I already have so much sock yarn. It's fine. I don't. Maybe next year. Well, stash dash is happening. I'm a uh, lace shawl. I know. 560 stitches around. <coughs> I know. I'm at six kilometers worth of crocheted yarn. Yes, but you're using squares from last year. Yeah. Which that's, totally counts. That's the kind of the point, dear. <laughs> I'm just, just so much knitting. <sighs> okay, uh, that was the socks thing. Um, we're not running anything else anymore. Nope. And so that brings us to... Stash Dash. Stash Dash, thank you. And Stash Dash is running via the Knit Girls. It's going until the 27th of August. Uh, I just hit 6.1 kilometers, because math. I am officially on the 15K and above a thread. I went in and I, I committed, so I stuck with it. Wrist injury notwithstanding, that's that's what I said I was going to do, so that's what I'm doing. So we will see how far I go, and it's two crochet projects at the moment because one of them was a beefy, beefy blanket. Which, yes, the point is to finish projects. So you can check out all the rules and stuff. They've got uh, a wonderful YouTube video that they posted, plus all of the links uh, and rules and stuff in the Ravelry thread. So I currently have one pair of socks, my April May socks which I still haven't woven in the ends on. They're That's sitting okay. over there behind the camera in the stack of things that I need to mend and weave in ends on. Uh, I haven't woven in the ends of my socks yet, so I can't count it for Stash Dash, but uh, once those are done, those are going to go in too. In theory, I will have one and a half kilometers of shawl and then some assorted socks. So maybe three kilometers? Maybe. It adds up quickly. Like, I didn't think I had 5k till I realized exactly how many thousands of meters <laughs> a crocheted blanket is at my size. They're not small throws I'm making. They're big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah. I it adds a, up quickly. I did a queen size one, and it's three kilometers yep. in a blanket. Yeah. Like, there are kilometers of yarn in a blanket. Yes. That's a weird thought. Yeah, because I made, I made mine big and thick, and there's no little holes in mine, so yeah, no, mine is a lot of kilometers. And then borders. Uh, so now we're just into events that we're actually attending. Yes, that'll be in the fall. Yep, September, the middle of September? Yes. I believe it's the 15th and 16th? Yes, I think so. Uh, that is the local Manitoba Fiber Festival at Assiniboine Outs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we will be attending that. Oh, absolutely. And then at the end of September... We're off to Knit City! We're off to Knit City in Vancouver, which is going to be my first time properly in Vancouver and not just in the airport. That'll be exciting. Yeah. I'd love to show you all the things. Yeah. Do all the stuff. See the things, do the stuff. Mm-hmm. See mm -hmm. the stuff, do the things. See the stuff, do the things, as it were. So that'll be a, a jam-packed weekend. I know the uh, Cozy Up Knit sisters are going, so we need to we need to make coffee plans. Jamie! Call me. We need to make coffee plans. <laughs> so that happens. Coffee plans, beer plans, just social beverage plans. Social beverage plans? Tea, if that's your thing. Heck, a glass of water. Some fruit in it. It's a social beverage. Yeah, it all counts. Yeah. Social beverage plans. 
I just think coffee because you're going to be talking and walking and doing so much that weekend. It's going to be a high caffeination sort of level requirement weekend. True. And then I suspect, don't quote me, that there will be an Instagram shot of me knitting on the airplane and Diana sleeping on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, that's how it's going to go. And it's going to be my eyebrows raised. I think it'll be like, and we wore Diana out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caffeine crash on the plane on the way back. Yeah. That'll yeah. be good. Yeah, that's fine. We I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> the post-conference conference Odin sleep. Yes. Yes. So... That's a thing. And then uh, when we get to Christmas, we've got other things going on. But for the moment, oh, yeah. that's that's it for events. Yep. Which just leaves us with a review. In fact. Shall we review your slouchy beanies and head wraps crochet book that you found at Michael's? Yeah. Uh, so this is by Lisa, I think it's Gentry or Gentry? Gentry, probably. Lisa Gentry. Um, there was a cool fact about her okay. in the back of the book. Yeah. She won the Guinness Book of World Records Fastest Crocheter Certificate in 2005. I didn't even know they had one of those. That Neither did I. Exciting and, and frightening all at the same time. So that's kind of cool. How fast must you crochet to get one of those? Super fast. Fast I've watched enough speed to have hitters. an entire book of patterns uh, all your own. Um, I don't know anybody could do that. But Well, yes, but she's got multiples. Like, oh, jeez. Yeah. And apparently she also does stuff for... Just stuff for Leisure, Art, Leisure Arts Publications, which is this book, mm -hmm. and uh, well-known yarn companies. So probably all the well-known yarn companies when they have those patterns on the places and the things. Oh yeah, it's probably her. That's a good option. So we took a look at hats. Yeah, slouchy beanies, because you can Ooh, still wear those in the summer if it's cool enough in your office. Yes, it's true. You can. I got some ones about scarves and stuff too, and that's just no. That, that's it's not the right weather for that. So we will review it shortly. Um, the first one I liked was the uh, scallops. Oh, one. the shell one. Shell the shell beanie. Okay. I also I'm just gonna start with the basic beanie. Okay. Um, how shall I do this without giving away the secret sauce? There we go. So this one. It's it, a basic beanie. It is super basic. <laughs> it is not entirely boring. It has a slight texture to it, because you double crochet through the back loop. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's got a slight ridge to it. But uh, my comment on this one was, the yarn makes it. So here it's shown in a uh, tweedy sort of a yarn. Yes. And that makes it masculine, as it's modeled by a guy. But you could also make it in sparkly unicorn barf colors at a DK weight, and it would be perfect for a kid. And you could... I have, like whatever yarn you make this out of and yeah like the pattern it's, it's perfect for the top of your head <laughs> anyway so I thought it was a good basic thing to play with yarn and just yeah yeah absolutely play with yarn on that one no I think that's a that good was my comment. comment okay the shells beanie yes I like the look of the shells beanie yeah that we'll one like I would, this one I would probably actually wear if I made it I wasn't sure about this color I would do it in a, in a tweed I feel like a solid color for this one because it's got an interesting texture. Yeah. They've done it in the stripey thing and I'm not sure about the stripes. Nice. But I really like the texture. I like the texture and I like the I like the crochet stitch specifically. I've done it before. Oh, I'd also like to point out that uh, these are all in worsted and bulky weight. And, and not one of them like stupid fast. Not one of them takes more than a hundred grams. So yeah, Beautiful. stupid fast. Like you could do this in an evening probably. Oh yeah, which is wonderful. Uh, the edge of my nose is itchy. <laughs> okay. Do you want to show off all of them? I just want to talk about the ones I liked. Okay. Uh, well, did you like this one? Uh, no, the next one I liked was... Uh, that would be really cute on my niece. <laughs> the nose boy one. She's got that cute little heart-shaped face like Diana has. It would look really cute. Uh, I wouldn't wear this. I know you wouldn't, but my niece would. Yeah, yeah, it would look really cute on her. My niece would totally wear the cable, the nose boy beanie. Okay. It might be the hat I make her out of that leftover yarn I've got from the Rivers Wrap. Oh, got to talk about this one. Which one's that one? The Lacy Beanie. Oh, see, I liked it, but not enough to make it. I don't, I'm not sure. It's kind of neat, but I feel like it, I don't know, it needed some more interesting yarn. It's just a solid blue. That's fair. So I feel like it needed a little bit of something. A little something something? A little something. Also, there's no chart for this, so if you hate charts... Uh, this is the book for you, because there's it's, not a chart in it. No, it's, it's all, all written directions. It's all written directions, so that's okay. 
I liked the V stitch. Yeah. One. There's a bigger photo of the V stitch, isn't there? Oh, there is. Yeah. That was the only. I just got really excited. It's the only other beanie that I would make and, and actually probably wear for myself. Isn't just because the stitch, this, this stitch is interesting. I wrote on this one, my comment was swirly. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Because <laughs> if you look at the back of the hat, the, the stitch pattern kind of makes it look like a swirl. Mm -hmm. um, but from the front, it's just like nice and vaguely lacy, and like I really like this, even in the color and everything. Yeah, no, it's I was 100 really pretty. 100% would wear. Really well done, and it's one of the ones that I might actually wear, so. That was it for beanies for me. Okay, well, I really like beanies, and I don't really like head wraps, so I suspect you're going to talk about all the head wraps, and I'm going to talk about all the head beanies. wraps, but some of the head wraps, yes. I wear I wear band, headbands. Uh, this is the Ripples beanie. I quite like this. I thought it would be good for those uh, short repeat self-striping yarns or gradients or whatever. So I thought that was quite interesting. This one, uh, depending on the colors you pick, would also be very easy to make for a guy. And then we're into head wraps. I liked the single crochet head wrap. It's nice, big, thick, bulky, and perfect for winters in Canada. Single crochet head wrap. Okay. Oh, I like how they even have a maple leaf button on it. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, I just, I don't do headbands, so. Uh, I do because I, my head gets really hot and I don't like it. <laughs> but I do wear headbands to keep my ears warm. So that would be one that I will make and wear. Same with my mom. But the only other one that I really liked in the head wraps was the next one, which was the crossover one, which has a nice little detail to it. This last one. So that's the other one that I would make and totally wear and will make and wear for both me and my mom, because both of us prefer headbands to hats. Yeah, that's it's interesting. If I wore headbands, I would totally make that, but I just... Well, it's similar to, like, I always have my sunglasses on my head. Yeah. So for me, it's the same sort of idea. And I've taken my sunglasses off my head because I just, I don't know, I don't, I don't like stuff there on my head. I've never liked headbands. Not even as I, a kid. I grew up wearing headbands. But I have um, that super naturally thick hair. Yes. So a hat doesn't isn't super necessary for me, but I do need some sort of wind blockage for my ears. For my tiny little ears. So uh, headbands just do the trick. Fair enough. So. I just no. like hats. It's a super cute little hat book. So this is... I can't read that mirrored. Slouchy beanies. Slouchy beanies on head wraps by Lisa Gentry. Uh, this will be, oh, this retails for, well, I bought it for eleven ninety nine Canadian. Yes. And they put a sticker over the American price. So well, I don't know. <laughs> they but, probably had a lot of confusion because a lot of the time the American price is printed bigger than the Canadian price. Oh, wait, here we go. Post, I found it, actually. It does cause some problems for some uh, people. 9 99 US and eleven okay. ninety nine Canadian. Well, that's not a bad conversion rate. No. Yeah. We found it at Michael's. Yep. So you can probably find it at your local Michaels. Mm -hmm. uh, or I will link it in the show notes with our Amazon affiliate link. Ooh, yeah, that thing. Use, we get a little bit of that money, which is another way you can support us. If you're going to buy the, you're going to buy any of the books that we're talking about anyway, uh, if you use the Amazon affiliate link, if I, if we've provided one in the show notes, uh, then we get a little bit from that and that would be super great. It just all goes towards making the hobby net neutral on the admin end. Yep. Web hosting. Uh, editing program software stuff. All the things. Better camera, better sound, better software. Make Jocelyn work harder. <laughs> That's what it all is. Give Jocelyn more work. <laughs> That's good. However, that wraps us up for the week, which yeah. is exciting. My beverage actually lasted the entire time. Mine's done. I forgot to get the ginger ale. Yeah, I just realized. I'm sorry. That's okay. So did I. <laughs> all right. We are officially into July. We are halfway through the year, folks. I gotta go wind some yarn and then we're gonna cast on a shawl. I gotta scarf some lunch and hit up the Osborne Street Festival. So I will say until next week, I'm Jocelyn. And I'm Diana. And no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. knit. See, like, I know we got the timing down. Well,